Il Presidente. Allora. Cari colleghe e cari colleghi. Colleagues, let me welcome Prime Minister Antonio Costa and President Ursula von der Leyen, who are here today in the chamber for this ceremony, which is marking an important day for European democracy. Today we're signing the joint declaration in which our three institutions commit themselves to launching the Conference on the Future of Europe on the 9th of May. I'd like to thank Prime Minister Costa, who has been personally involved in the negotiations, so that an agreement could be reached between the Parliament, the Commission and the Council. We're finally getting started, colleagues. The Conference on the Future of Europe will be a unique opportunity for all European citizens, civil society, and for the possibility to decide on our future. We need to open this up, and we want to put citizens and civil society, but also national parliaments at the hearts of the process. We want regions, local players, social partners, the academic world, young people to be involved too. This conference will be a new forum for debate in which European citizens will have a special role to play because they are the first that have a stake in the future of the European project. We're putting European citizens at the heart of this project, we're consulting them, we're involving them in all the debates of the conference and this will give them an opportunity to discuss the things that they hold dear. We commit ourselves to listen to their expectations, their concerns and their ideas. And that's why the conference is going to be an innovative event that could be a game changer. The pandemic is striking our citizens hard. The self-employed women, the elderly young people, the health sector, our economies have been struck, our schools have been affected, jobs as well. During the last year, all Europeans have seen their daily lives turned upside down. Europe is going through a difficult, dramatic time, but the solidarity that Europe embodies cannot be the only response to this crisis. Europe we will, be, will be at the heart of the economic and social recovery, and we will also be at the heart of the vaccination strategy. A joint and solidarity-based approach is the only way for us to move forward. The expectations of our citizens vis-à-vis -vis Europe are stronger than ever now. And in this context, it is essential to continue to give Europe the right tools to respond to these expectations, these demands for solidarity. We need to prepare for future challenges. And that's why the conference is important. It needs to be a moment of reflection so that we can draw the lessons from the crisis, but also boost our democracy. Europe needs to be able to tackle global challenges and adapt to a changing world. But in order to do that, it'll need the means to be more effective, more democratic, more flexible, more resilient. Democracy is fragile as was shown last January in Washington. And the functions of democracy need to be defended. We need to protect the common good and guarantee participation, transparency and the involvement of citizens in our democratic life. We need to ensure that there is participation in our society. We need to renew our democratic pact and our link with society. Here we're creating a genuine European public space. We've seen that already during what happened this year. The crisis revealed that public opinion is more pro-European than ever. We're aware of our unity and we're aware that we have a common destiny. These are things that are shared by the majority of citizens and decision-makers in Europe. 
What we now have to do is establish the basis for a new European social contract. We need to strengthen Europe so that we no longer suffer when crises emerge. We need to have the strategic tools and capacities available in order to ensure that Europe is more resilient. We need to listen, discuss and change Europe together. And that's what our three institutions have committed to do. And today we're launching the Conference on the Future of Europe, which will kick off on the 9th of May. We are committed also to ensuring clear follow-up to the recommendations and conclusions that the conference will produce. It's essential for this exercise to lead to clear actions. We need legislative changes and treaty changes, if that's what citizens want. We're committed to having no taboos. We want to ensure that the results will show a real view of our European project, our credibility as representatives of our institutions and citizens is at stake. Our future is at stake here, as is the future of our democracy. This is an opportunity to rediscover the soul of the European project and bring it alive. So we would invite all European citizens to get involved in the conference and build the Europe of tomorrow so that it can become their Europe. Thank you. Let me now give the floor to Prime Minister Antonio Costa, please. President of the European Parliament, Madam President of the European Commission, ladies and gentlemen, members of the European Parliament, across the whole of Europe, we're experiencing a pandemic has led to the greatest economic and social crisis since the Second World War, with our hospitals, our health professionals fighting to save lives on a daily basis. We're racing against the clock with vaccinations. Millions of workers are losing their jobs and thousands of companies are running the risk of going bankrupt. With the uncertainty and the fear that is now our everyday backdrop, starting the conference on the future of Europe is a sign of hope for the future that we want for all of Europe. We have confidence that we will overcome the pandemic, that we will escape from this crisis. We hope that together we will be able to build a Europe for the future, a fair Europe, a green Europe, a digital Europe. We therefore welcome the fact that it's been possible to break the deadlock that paralyzed us. And here I'd like to express my thanks to everybody those here in the European Parliament, in the Commission, in the Council, who worked to be able to achieve this agreement. We are aware of the fact that we don't all have the same vision for a future Europe or Europe for the future. But that's exactly why the Conference on the Future of Europe will be a decisive point in time for being able to discuss this without any taboos, bringing together our different visions. It's only in this way that we can overcome differences and strengthen what brings us together. And that is what has always happened during the almost 64 years that have passed since the Treaty of Rome. And the time to move is now because we have to start preparing now to recover from the pandemic and to ensure that when that happens, we will be ready and don't waste a second in building for the future. The union needs to be strengthened. Citizenship needs to be strengthened. And that's why this conference 
can't be one involving so just the institutions with a vision for the institutions. It has to be a conference owned by European citizens about what they want and what they desire for the future of our union. It has to be a conference. It has to be a conference on political issues that are of genuine concern to Europeans, apart from the problems of the present, health, the years of public indebtedness. Eurobatomer barometer gives a very clear picture of the issues that most concern young citizens and which we have to provide answers for economic issues and unemployment in particular climate change migration terrorism we have a strategic agenda for the future and that brings the european institutions together for a common future europe protecting its citizens freedoms better with a dynamic, just, green social basis, putting European values on the world stage. But what we need is for Europeans to embrace these goals and to feel ownership for them, because at the end of the day, they will be the final beneficiaries. And that is why this conference is so important because it will enable us to bring Europeans into a public area. It's important for Europeans to have an area where they can discuss their fears, their expectations with their representatives, because public policies have to provide tangible responses to the everyday needs of citizens if no citizen is to be felt is to feel they have been left behind. We mustn't lose any more time. It's time to deliver. It's time to start building our future together. Thank you. Let me now give the floor to the President of the Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. Please. Dear President, dear Prime Minister, honourable members, we all have our own dreams when we think about the future of Europe. For me, this would be a Europe that is leading the world in its green and digital transitions. A Europe that embraces the full creativity and diversity of all of its citizens and leaves no one behind. A Europe that is able to fight recurrent pandemics and protects its citizens. A Europe whose demo democracies are resilient against fake news and the distorting effects of social media. A Europe that is a strong voice for freedom and reason in a world where autocrats challenge our way of life. This and much more is my dream of Europe, one out of 450 million dreams. Today we want to hear about the Europe our citizens are dreaming of. We want people to take the lead on issues that matter to them and affect their everyday lives. Today we signed our joint declaration on the Conference on the Future of Europe. Some may ask, why now, in the middle of a pandemic, a crisis? My answer is, it is exactly in time of crisis when we see where Europe works for people and where we have to get better. The last months have shown that Europe can achieve if it has the competences and the necessary means to act. Take Next Generation EU and our European budget, 1.8 trillion euros to build forward better. An unprecedented investment to come out of this crisis 
together, more sustainable, more digital, more fair, and more resilient, stronger than ever. But during this pandemic, we have also seen difficulties. When Europe's competences are weak, only gradually did solidarity and support overcome closed borders. It took too much of time till there was a consensus. How to better prepare for the next round in the fight against the virus and its future variants. Till everyone understood that going it alone is not an option. Let me be very clear. This conference on the future of Europe is not just another conference for what some call the Brussels bubble. This conference has to go beyond Brussels, has to go beyond national capitals, because for this conference to succeed, we want to reach what some call the silent majority. We want to hear from European citizens in their full diversity, from young and old, city dwellers and rural residents, from Erasmus students to those who took to the streets in the Pulse of Europe demonstrations, as well as from those who have their doubts if creating an ever closer union is the right road to take. We want to hear from all, because it is as true today as it has been in the days of Robert Schumann, one of our founding fathers. When it comes to the future of Europe, no effort is too much, no dream is too bold. Thank you. Thank you.